Hey. Enough about me and my pathetic sex life. Let us welcome the next and final comedian onto the stage. This guy is a fellow countryman of mine. He is as paddy as they make him. His blood is green. And judging by the size of his body, he must have twice as much blood as everyone in this room. Let's welcome onto the stage with a big round of applause, Dublin Day! Thank you very much. Right, I'm going to start with something, you know, I had a very weird experience today when I was going to work. This was just so fucking unbelievably strange, I decided I had to say this up on stage today. I was quite sleepy there today going to work because I was working very hard last night drinking with my students. <laughs> yeah, some of them are here probably. And as I was walking down the street, all of a sudden, a snowman committed suicide. <laughs> the fucker almost hit me. <laughs> and I noticed that all around Warsaw, there seemed to be snowmen jumping off buildings. And it's really fucking dangerous <laughs> at the moment. Right, anyway, now guys, I've got one or two things I would like to talk to you. Because, you know, tomorrow, I'm surprised nobody talked about it. This is St. Patrick's Eve. Yeah! And my God, I'm excited. I feel like a kid on Christmas Eve, yeah? Except I already know what I'm getting tomorrow. I'm getting a hangover. <laughs> but before I go and start talking about St. Patrick or anything like that, let's go back in time. A long, long time ago. We're going to talk about Irish history a little. Now, my country has a very rich history. I know you're all thinking it's boring, but it's not really. The reason why we had such a rich history is because we kept fucking robbing the English blind for years. Yeah? We used to jump in our boats, go across to England, you know, have a good old party, kill a lot of people, burn down the buildings, take the women and go back home. The only thing that's changed is we go to Krakow. Now, guys, we all know St. Patrick's Day. We all know St. Patrick, but none of you know why. Yeah? Yeah, snakes. <laughs> so let's learn a little bit about St. Patrick today, yeah? A long time ago, St. Patrick decided he didn't like the Irish, so he was going to convert them. Yeah? So, you know, he was given a mission by God. Look at these heathen bastards. They're drinking, they have like 20 different gods. I'm jealous. Yeah, I don't like it. We've got to change this. So, St. Patrick said, yes, Lord. No problem, Lord. I'll be over there tomorrow. So, St. Patrick came across in his little boat to spread the word of God and to kill snakes. <laughs> not sure about the second part. I, I think he had some sort of weird phobia or fetish. I'm not sure. So, he roamed the land, spreading the word of God. And every person he came in contact with, he would sit down and he would tell them the story of Jesus. Yes, he would tell them what, why it is good to be a Christian. Why, what will happen to you when you die. And the only thing that anybody seemed to remember was that this religion seems to involve virgins, some guy who makes alcohol, <laughs> and we're allowed to make friends with prostitutes. <laughs> and this is the main thing that they all took away from this. But the great thing about St. Patrick's Day was... Like, the great thing about St. Patrick was he must have been like a traveling salesman. Yeah? Nowadays, you get these guys, they knock on your door. Good evening, madam. I would like to show you this new Hoover, new vacuum cleaner. Uh, we have a few different models here. And that just got me thinking. Did he just go with Christianity? Or did he have a backup plan? Like, he was there, he was like, so, let's have a look at Christianity. Yeah, okay, first of all, you can't have sex before marriage. No, I'm sorry about that. You're not allowed to touch yourself. <laughs> That's a big no-no. <laughs> but, you can drink. And that way, you're not going to be like all these bloody bastards who keep blowing themselves up. So, but what if they didn't like the idea of Christianity? Well, it's like, well, on the other hand, we, hold on, I have something here. Oh, yes, I have Buddhism. Yeah, Buddhism is more liberal, you can do whatever you like. The only problem is, you have to be a vegetarian. And of course, Ireland became Catholic. 
So guys, most of you know, this, you know some things about Ireland. You know, when it comes to religion, that we like to kill each other. We've got the Protestants and the Catholics. And they're up the north, generally speaking, fighting away. And sheep all over the country, I heard someone say, yeah? And like, I was up there a little while ago, and you gotta be careful when you go to Northern Ireland. Really, it's a very scary place. Because as soon as you get off the bus, someone comes up to you and says, are you Catholic or are you Protestant? Now you have to answer correct. <laughs> because if you don't, someone's gonna shoot you. You have a few moments, a few seconds, to think of something else once you've answered not to die. I, fuck it, I took a gamble. I'm Catholic. Bollocks. And I saw the guy taking out the gun, and the first thing that popped into my head was, fuck, don't shoot me, I'm allergic to bullets. <laughs> the guy thought it was funny, he left me alone. But over the years, guys, the, the Catholic Church became an enormous power in Ireland, yeah? It had lots of money. Yeah, shh, shh. shh. <laughs> it had lots of... <laughs> yes, the snakes from Ireland came to Poland. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we, <laughs> would you shut up? <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> I'm after forgetting there. I apologize. <sighs> yes, thank you very much. Anyway, as I was saying, the the church became quite powerful. Yeah, they they gathered lots of money, lots of power, lots of influence, and for many many years they had power. They could control things, and they had very very well educated priests who liked to do very strange things. But still, nowadays it's not the same. I'll give you an example of this now. In recent years, because of the economic uh, downturn, what was I going to say there? The Catholic Church has not been as well funded as they once were. Now, to give you an example of this, a few weeks ago, there was an Irish priest who was asked to perform a christening on a baby. Yeah, you all know this. Problem was, he'd never done this before. So nowadays, guys, when we don't know something, what do we do? Google, we ask Uncle Google. So we sat down, christenings, to how to christen correctly. Oh, okay, fair enough. Watch a couple of videos. Oh, that looks easy, I can do that. Gotta go to Tesco first, okay, no problem. <laughs> so, next day he was in the church, he was holding the baby, he's like, I now christen you, Anthony O'Neill. And all the family, ah, oh, lovely. Then the priest put his hand behind his back, he took out a bottle of champagne, oh. and he smashed it over the baby's head. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I like that idea, but... <laughs> Shouldn't have said that too loud, there's a baby here, sorry. <laughs> but the thing is that most people don't realize about St. Patrick's Day, yeah? It's not just the one day. You don't just celebrate St. Patrick's Day, it's impossible. Because Irish people around the world, yeah? We don't, all we do for St. Patrick's Day is we drink in large quantities, yeah? You're not gonna survive if you do this the one day. You have to build up to it. Yeah? Now, don't worry. After, after this sh show, I'll be giving free lessons <laughs> for anybody who feels the need to prepare because we're basically on to the countdown. It's like Christmas Eve and New Year's all in one. And guys, leave, I'm going to leave you with that and I'm going to go finish this. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Happy St. Patrick's Day! <laughs> That was Dublin Dave, guys, give it up! <laughs>